Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, thank you to you for letting us sponsor it. We're really proud to be sponsoring Tell Northwest 19. And the first, the inaugural one, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, fantastic. Yes. And what great numbers because I've had trouble getting here and I'm sure you all have as well with the roads and some of what was happening on the, net, the rail network. Well, I'm Sarah Chesney. I'm an implementation specialist and I'm here with my colleague Paul Duval, who is also an implementation specialist, but formerly of Liverpool University. So he'll give you a little bit more outline about that when we um, show you some of our next slides. Um, and we're just going to give you a very a whistle-stop tour of Pebble Pad. And um, then I'm hoping that if you've piqued your interest, you'll come and find us. Um, we've got a very discreet banner in the hallway. Um, <laughs> Small thing. Okay, thank you, Paul. Now, just a show of hands, how many of you have already heard of Pebble Pad? Not necessarily using it, but have heard of it. Okay, well, that's a good number, but there are some who, who haven't heard. Now, so for those sort of a quick overview, then, some of you will already be familiar with what Pebble Pad is sort of um, known for, and that's supporting reflection and um, structuring activities so that students can have a personal space in which to reflect and look at their learning and then at an appropriate moment um, collect and curate things ready for perhaps showcasing and sharing with a wider audience whether it's a tutor or whether it's with um, a prospective employer but what we're finding more and more now is that um, use tends to sort of move over into this sort of area is where um, use is supporting institutional processes. So it's looking at um, assessment and feedback, monitoring progress, and that side of our system is called Atlas, and we'll refer to that in the next few minutes. But this slide also, and it is available in some of our brochures if you want to um, look at it further, also tells us uh, that we really do count on the pedagogy first to inform up the design of our platform and we hope that that shines through. I'll hand over to Paul now, who's got a few examples that might pique your interest, and we tried to sort of focus on things that we know are um, in the region. Thanks, so. So hi everyone, great to be here. Very exciting event today. Um, like Joe says, I used to uh, work in Liverpool, so it was a miracle I got parked today, for starts. So that was a great start. Amongst the builders' vans, taking up the visitor spaces, I'm going to complain to my MP about that. Outrageous. <laughs> um, right, so a few examples that we're going to show you today. So what we want to do is give you a quick overview, uh, base it around a few examples of current practice. And what we've tried to do is uh, pick out some examples around topics that we think will be uh, of interest to everyone in the room, um, organisations from, from the Northwest. So work-based learning, vocational courses. We've got a specific example from uh, School of Medicine here in Liverpool because obviously we're host of the so we thought that was a, a good one to show but obviously it relates to any other vocational training as well. Degree apprenticeships is a growing area that a lot of people are getting involved in and starting to understand and Pebble Path uh, is a platform that can really help uh, with that. Personal tutoring or academic advising, lots of different terminology for it but we wanted to give you an example of some uh, incredible work at Birmingham that's happened around a a, a university-wide initiative of personal tutoring and how Pebble Park supported that. Uh, and the last one, professional development. So things like uh, PG CAP, PG CERT, CPD, using uh, Pebble Park from an individual point of view as a member of staff, and then that informing teaching and uh, teaching and learning activities that goes on. So I'm sure got an example from Cumbria, University of Cumbria about that. Thanks, sir. So first example, work-based learning. Um, so we're going to look at uh, Liverpool Medical School. And this is the um, view of our app. So it's called Pebble Pockets. Um, it's an app that's free to download, free to use. Um, but then if you want customised content available within it, you use your account within Pebble Pub to allow certain customised forms to be made available. And the whole point of this is any vocational course that requires external assessments from an individual that may not be within your university or organization's uh, uh, networks, they have the ability to verify and sign off evidence and lock it down in the moment. So that basically this process of having a signature associated with frameworks, competency-based uh, activities, 
means you can basically get verification in any environment, anywhere, anytime. So even without uh, the internet, you can still be locked down. And the, the, the assessor then is confident that what they've put is locked down in the moment, and then the student can use that against evidence within the telepath structure overall. So the next uh, slide, then, sorry, next. This is an example again, Liverpool Medical School uh, in year two, um, a couple of years ago, uh, used telepath for lots of different specific activities. So they have reflective templates that they need to record in, in specific assignments. But then they have an overall clinical workbook, which allowed them to, throughout the year as medical students, update their evidence and their competencies against the structure that was defined for them. And that live link uh, was updated dynamically. So some things were one-off templates, like reflective activities, but some things were ongoing portfolios and workbooks that the <coughs> students worked on. Um, so this would be the case for any vocational course, engineering, uh, healthcare, anything that has placements is perfect for. Next slide, please, sir. This is an example of uh, how a workbook looks within the system, so you can customise it and design it, make it uh, look aesthetically pleasing, more corporate if that's appropriate, and the structure that you have down the left-hand side there, that's a content structure, it can basically be mapped against any structure that you like. So this one in year two is mapped against the activities the medical students went through throughout the year. Uh, and even had little drop down menus where they did communication skills here. That was a whole new range of content within the overall workbook. Just on the next slide, Sarah, this shows uh, another structure. So, what was uh, done in Liverpool in the medical school, different structures over the years were created, and this structure is based around the clinical placements that took place. So, whatever makes sense to the students and the staff, then can be created in this system, and a workbook can be mapped against it. And the last one, I think, so, yeah. So this is basically showing you, over time, what happened in the medical school. And this is, Pebble Pad so flexible it can cope with this, that uh, the personal shoestring or the academic advising, in this case, educational supervision that happened out in the hospitals, that provided the structure within the pages. So you basically have fields that could be completed by members of staff, fields that were completed by students, and then within the page itself, the clinical activity that the students recorded was in the context of those one-to-one -one meetings they had with educational supervisors. So over the years, the content of Pellopad was refined to suit the situation. Uh, so very flexible for any vocational course. This is a medicine example. Okay. Next one's degree of friendship, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, people who know Pebblepad of old might be familiar with it as um, a e-portfolio system and um, we, we have had sort of conversations internally and we're now sort of looking at um, we're rebranding it as a learning journey platform because um, we're wanting to see it not just from um, you know from when people first engage with perhaps um, level three or four subjects up to level seven and maybe beyond we do have examples of it's used, being used to support PhD um, uh, study but um, we're um, what else we to thought? So we're thinking of it as an, an e-portfolio system, um, but we also want it to be sort of with people as they study, that's right. And I also wanted to mention that in things like degree apprenticeships, what we're finding is it's um, being picked up by some of um, the institutions here, all the institutions here. And the thing that is really interesting for people and employers is that Pebble Pad users get an alumni account. So when they finish their program of study, they can then go on and carry on using Pebble Pad. So the work that they've done and the workbooks that they've been putting together whilst they've been on a degree apprenticeship remain with them and people are finding this extremely useful. So that connection between work, between study um, and um, further study and further sort of CPD opportunities is really quite strong. Here on the degree apprenticeships, some of the things that our customers have been grappling with, we've been really working with them to try and help them because those of you, uh, can I just get another show of hands? How many are, have got sort of some involvement in degree apprenticeships at your organisation? Okay, so a few of you, yeah. What, what we found, and if you want to sort of come and chat to us about whether you found similar challenges, that's fine by us, um, is that it's the monitoring and the, 
that the fact that the apprentice is out um, and away from campus often and a little bit hard to reach. And also then sort of reminding them that they need to keep meeting records. You'll see at the top here, we've designed a workbook that um, allows for students to upload details of meeting records where they can record that they've met their work-based mentor and their university or um, college tutor and actually have that submitted and be able to be reported on. And the other thing that we found that people are grappling with is the off-the-job training, the off-the-job learning, sometimes called the 20% that is a requirement um, for the funding. And of course, um, you know, you, organisations need to report back to the funders that the students are actually getting this 20% off-the-job learning to actually, um, you know, contribute towards their um, degree study. The other thing that we're finding um, institutions are um, interested in is the endpoint assessment and what happens with that um, and how do you know when a, um, an apprentice is ready for the endpoint assessment. So we've put together a workbook, which if you don't mind going back a stage, um, if you are interested in um, degree apprenticeships, we've got to the point now where we've designed a workbook, which we can actually put into your um, that your installation of um, pebble pads, so you wouldn't have to do the work around this because of these common um, challenges that um, people, providers of degree apprenticeships um, are facing. The other thing that with degree apprenticeships I mentioned is the challenge of tracking and monitoring students that are, or apprentices that are at a distance um, and come in infrequently, maybe for blocks of days where the um, curriculum is and the timetable is quite heavy. Um, we do have, you can design things within Pebblepad so that they are, can be reported on. So the, you can track the number of hours, you can track the number um, of pieces of evidence that a student or an apprentice has uploaded into that workbook. And that also is a sign of how they are progressing and whether that evidence is um, appropriate or not, which is a key part of the degree apprenticeships. i hand back to you. Thanks, sir. Okay, so this is a personal tutoring example. This is uh, from the University of Birmingham. So um, it was a remarkable initiative, actually. Within a year, they went from um, zero uh, users in the system to 35,000. So it was a huge initiative. Rolled out as um, basically across the whole university, they wanted a platform that could support the personal tutoring in a consistent way. Um, so they went up massively, huge numbers, driven by academic staff in each department. Uh, Pebble Pad was a key part of how it was delivered, but it was a much bigger initiative and project within the university. Uh, so it was seen as a means of actually of service, especially for widening participation students, uh, part of the response to student wellbeing, uh, and they wanted to make the most out of tutorial time. Increasingly, students in the National Student Survey, contact time is an issue, uh, having access to someone, building a relationship, forming an identity within a school. Uh, departments and personal tutoring has been seen uh, as seeing a solution to that. That's what Birmingham has thought, and they really trying to push on with that. Uh, next slide, sir. So, the way they did it is using um, a common workbook across the institution. Um, PebblePad is learner centered, so it's owned by the student, but it's a, a template, if you like, and students can fill in certain sections of it. So, it's consistent, but it allows students to fill in their, their sections. Uh, it's closely linked to the VLE. Uh, where the content is housed, uh, some of the materials behind the whole initiative, um, and also leads to other initiatives like study abroad, uh, and dissertation, and so on. So it's a, a common framework around personal tutoring that can then lead on to other things. So we've got a few screenshots. You just go on to the next slide, sir. Thank you. Uh, so this is basically an overview and introduction to tutoring where the students can introduce themselves, upload a picture if that's appropriate, some other things about themselves. So you come into that personal tutoring meeting with with some context so it, it's useful straight away rather than just having a quick chat and saying see you next year which in the past personal tutoring often used to be. Um, next, slide, next slide there, so wellbeing information embedded within the personal tutoring workbook and the next one about grades, is it? yeah so you can have grades then in here as well that allow you to focus on uh, academic performance and often we know that there's the pastoral and the academic link between this area which is crucial uh, and that provides that context. So it's huge success in Birmingham, um, huge initiative, and Pelopad was key in, in delivering that. Right, the last one was professional comment. We chose this one to be the last slide because we are conscious that, you know, it's about, um, 
people in the room may be going for, or CMALT may be going for HEA fellowships. So this is an example from the University of Cumbria, where they use pedal pad for their CPD um, route for HEA recognition. And they, although pedal pad does integrate with um, VLEs like Blackboard, Canvas and Moodle, they've chosen for this particular route for it to be standalone. So they use it, um, that part of pedal pad almost as a VLE. So all the resources are on there. And they also um, use Atlas, which is the institutional space I mentioned earlier in that first slide, um, where they use the self-enroll feature. So staff who, you know yourselves when you're talking to staff, that they're often quite, again, like we've mentioned the apprentice is quite hard to reach and whether to know whether they're interested in um, perhaps a CPD offer that you have. So at Cumbria, for the CPD route, um, for HEA fellowship, they put in the self-enrolled feature on Atlas, so um, staff go self-enroll and they treat that as an expression of interest in joining the route to HEA recognition. And um, I think it's probably best to just sum up as we are sort of um, conscious of time. Oh, no, no okay. I'm 30 seconds in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Spending that time laughing there. Um, um, that's quite interesting, although we would like to say that that was um, that high number of 70% of staff hold fellowship, senior or principal fellowship was down to pedal pad. Of course it isn't, but it is quite nice to be a small part of that success. And um, they're certainly able to sort of monitor and stay in touch with people going for recognition. And um, they feel in a much more constructive way than the alternatives. And the other thing that they found is that by introducing people to Pebble Pad, who might not have come across it within the institution, and I've certainly found this at the University of Bolton as well, is that it's actually sparked interest in using it with students. So, um, you know, that's prompted quite a lot of interest and activity around, um, you know, sort of cascading it out to students when people have used it themselves. And I don't know if you've considered using it for any of your um, sort of CPD offers, things that you're signing up for, but we certainly have things like um, CMOLT and as I've mentioned, HEA accreditation and um, examples of use. So Paul. Great, so that's uh, a quick overview. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, come and find us today in the breaks, we'll be uh, by the registration desk. Um, hopefully uh, you enjoy the food that we bought. If, if you don't, we didn't make it. <laughs> but if you did, we'll take that credit. Thank you very much. Or we can go to Greg's. You know, it's, it's on Sarah. <laughs> Such a drill each. <laughs> um, so we've got uh, a website also and uh, other information, but there's our emails and you can come and chat to us today. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day.